have any issues with the wheels on your CNC or laser machine, then stick around because that's what we're going to be covering in today's episode. Hey everyone and welcome to the latest episode of James Dean Designs. If you're new to the channel, love laser and CNC, make sure you hit that subscribe button to get all the latest tutorials, tips, tricks and reviews. It's literally right there and only takes a second. Now in today's episode we're going to be talking about the wheels on your CNC or laser machine. Now the reason this is important, it controls how smooth they actually run and flow and any discrepancies in them is going to cause quality issues in the work you are producing. Now I should stress at this point this is relevant to any machine that uses those type of V wheels these little rubber V wheels here it doesn't matter if it what brand it is it doesn't matter if it's laser or CNC or 3d printer any machine that uses those will be affected by these issues we're going to cover today now what we're going to do is understand what causes these issues then easy solutions to them and then also harder solutions should you need to actually change all the wheels to get rid of the problems so let's dive in now understand more about how this issue occurs and then the solutions for it so let's simplify this down we've got the extrusion we've got the wheel and what should happen is it rolls nice and smooth without any jerks or wobbling now let's keep this extrusion in place magnify it up a bit and imagine this roll of sellotape is the wheel same principle rolls nice and smooth without any issues now ultimately what is happening is once these machines are produced and then go into storage or being shipped around the world obviously the rubber wheels or the polymer wheels are softer than the metal extrusion so it starts to change the shape whilst they are sitting and being transported around the world and ultimately you end up with a bit of a flat spot on the wheel itself and instead of ro rolling smoothly what essentially happens is you get that which is a the flat spot hitting and causing a sudden jerk or a bit of a rocking movement. And that is ultimately the cause of the problem. Now to solve this, there are a few different solutions. Some are easy, some are more drastic, but let's start with the simplest ones first. Now, ultimately what makes this worse is the fact that on the, um, the wheels, you've effectively got four wheels on each carriage. So therefore you have four flat spots. Now four wheels all with four flat spots at the same time means this jerk movement is going to be multiplied four times and therefore making it feel a lot worse than it actually is. So the simplest solution to this is to rotate each wheel and offset the flat spot. So mark your wheels up one to four, for example, and look at the position of number one, go to the second wheel rotate that round a little bit go to the third wheel rotate that round 180 degrees go to the fourth one rotate that in the opposite direction and effectively what you're doing is offsetting the flat spot on all four wheels so the flat spot will still be there as the carriage moves back and forward but because it is just one wheel at a time you don't notice the flat spot as much and ultimately over time this flat spot will start to go so but because these wheels are softer than the metal what will actually have start to happen over time is as you keep rolling the axis back and forth that flat spot will eventually go back to being round and ultimately you get the wheel back in the shape that it should be and you don't get that jerk action on the flat spot. As I say, that's one of the simplest methods and I'll show you how to do it actually in practice now. So what you'll want to do is slide your axis back and forth until you find the flat spot and leave it in that position. Now at this point you can either do it from memory or make life easier and use something like a white pencil and just put a mark on each wheel so you know where the position of it is. Obviously the top ones you can put marks on the top and the bottom ones on the bottom and so on. But the reality is it's about remembering where that wheel is so you can rotate it. Now you should be able to apply a little bit of pressure underneath the carriage and rotate the wheel round so i've just rotated that about a quarter of a turn i don't know if the camera can just pick that up you should just be able to see where the white mark is that was on top now that's rotated around a quarter now if i do the same on the other side or leave that one in position then rotate the bottom ones a quarter the opposite direction and the bottom furthest one away 180 degrees round it will mean that flat spot is offset on all four wheels. So therefore the carriage slides much easier because every time it hits a flat spot, it's only hitting the flat spot on one wheel at a time. And therefore you will hardly notice that at all. 
So if rotating your wheels round or trying to run the machine to bed it in isn't solving those flat spot issues, then chances are you may need to replace the wheels. Now this is not too difficult, but obviously it is a little bit more difficult than the solution that we've just gone through. So let's take a closer look and understand how we change the wheels on machines. So if it really is necessary to change the wheels because you can't get rid of the flat spot or the wheels are worn out or damaged, the first thing you'll want to do is make sure you've ordered the correct wheels to fit your machine. These come in slightly different sizes, different holes in the middle, different diameters, things like that. So there are a few variations and I'll put a list of different ones down in the description area below to fit the various machines that I have. Now when it actually comes to changing them over physically, the first thing you'll want to do is release as much tension on the wheel as possible. So whether you've got eccentric nuts or wheel clamps, make sure they're set to the loosest possible position to release the wheel pressure on the extrusion itself. You'll also want to release the clamps holding the belts in place just to take the tension off these as well and as I say just minimise the amount of pressure on the wheel. So we'll do that now. So that's the pressure taken off the belt. It's no longer applying tension to the wheel itself. And it should just make it that little bit easier to remove. Obviously, when you come to tighten them back up later, check the tension or even make a mark as to where your clamp was so you can pull it back to the same tension point. Now, when it comes to actually removing these wheels, be very careful and delicate. The threads can go quite easily and they are not the hardest of metal, so you can round the heads off for where the Allen bolt goes. So as I say, be very careful. I should also point out, usually the nuts holding them in position have what are called a nylon lock or a non-return nut on them. So it's basically designed to make it more difficult to take them off. So go slow, go steady, and just start to release the pressure in the nut and the bolt. So now I've slackened this off, I can just take the nut off the end and that effectively frees the wheel to come out. Obviously make sure you don't lose any parts as it comes out, but once the wheel comes out there we can see it has the wheel itself and a bush guide giving the correct space from the end plate. We're going to leave that in position for now. Then we're going to bring in a new wheel, place that back over, put it in place. Obviously we want to make sure it sits on top of the belt itself and that there is no wobble or gap between that bush. We're then going to bring in the nut, place that back on and just start to pinch everything back up. Now again, it's the opposite thing, you know, you still want to be careful when tightening this up, but you also don't want to over tighten them either. It just needs to be enough to pinch the nut up and make sure that it is gripping because if you make it too tight, the wheel then won't turn. That should be enough. I can still be able to turn that wheel, which is ideal for me. It's moving enough that um, it should mean there's less resistance and easy enough for the carriage to move about. So then we'll tighten the clamp back up. We're going to pull that all the way back in. And I'll then flip it over and tighten the eccentric nut up on the bottom. And that is essentially the wheel changed over. Now, this obviously is quite easy. This is only a single plate. But let's take a look at the Z carriage or the X carriage, which has plates either side and I can show you the difference. Now, where you have dual plates, the principle is exactly the same. We have slackened off the tension on the belt. We have set the eccentric nuts to its loosest position. And I've also taken off the nut and the washer. There is a washer on these, so make sure you keep that safe. Now at this point, the bolt itself will either push out, releasing the wheel, or you may have to actually unthread it depending on the type of machine you have. So we'll just go in here and we'll pull this, unwind this all the way out, and it should then allow the wheel to come free. Now once it's been released, what you can do is push it through from the other side and basically release the bolt itself. So there we have, the bolt has come out and we should now be able to remove the wheel and the bushes either side. Do be careful because obviously the carriage now comes loose so it does move about a bit easier. So we'll take that out, make sure we keep the bushes safe and then we're going to get a new wheel and drop that in. So it is now essentially the reverse of taking this out, albeit it's a little more difficult because we've got to align the wheel, the bushes and the bolts all together. So I'll start by putting the bolt in, dropping one of the bushes on to begin with, just as a starting position. And then we can start to add in the other components and align them up as best as possible. Now you will need to take the weight of the carriage itself from underneath in order to make sure all these align. And this is ideally where you can possibly do with another pair of hands as well. So we have the bushes in place for the first one. It's got the wheel as well. 
now try and drop this last bush in and get that bolt back through as I say it can be fiddly but just keep persevering and as I say taking the weight of the carriage itself will make your life easier there we are that has now gone all the way through so I just need to tighten the bolt back up to grip it the other side so there we have it we'll now apply the washer and the bolt back on tighten those up make sure everything is in position and then obviously tighten the tension back up on the belt and also on the eccentric nut on the bottom and that's some of the most difficult wheels then changed over so prevention is always better than a cure we know how to fix the issue let's take a look at how we can stop it happening in the future so ultimately the flat spots are caused by the amount of pressure being applied to the wheels themselves so what you can do is adjust that pressure to try and help things either apply more pressure if the wheel's too loose but ultimately the flat spot is caused by too much pressure being applied so you want to slacken it off now depending on whether you have clamping plates or eccentric nuts there are different ways of doing it but what we can just see here is this eccentric nut has got a marking on it with some uh, black permanent marker now most eccentric nuts will have something like this some marking or engraving to indicate which is the side of the nut applying the least amount of tension. Now obviously I've just changed the wheels over, so this is set to the loosest point, but you might find that that marking or engraving is further around one side or the other. Now ultimately, these type of nuts only work in 180 degrees one way or the other, because once you go past 180 degrees, you then the tension starts going in the opposite direction. So for example, the marker is on the bottom of this nut. So if I rotated it 180 degrees round to the other side by applying a spanner and turning it, that would then apply the maximum pressure. If I went another quarter of a turn, it would start to take the pressure back off and eventually come all the way around to the least amount of pressure being applied. So ultimately, you want to apply this in smaller amounts, such as either just doing an eighth of a turn or a quarter of a turn at the time to get the correct pressure that you're after. You should just be able to put your spanner in and adjust the pressure accordingly by turning it one way or the other. Now, if you are struggling because that is too tight, then basically you just want to slacken off the nut and bolt holding it in place just a little bit in order to turn that eccentric nut but remember to tighten those back up at the end and when i say about setting the pressure correctly on this wheel these wheels it really is about just making sure there's enough pressure to hold it onto the rail without any movement but without there being too much pressure that if you leave your machine for a long period a week a month it's not going to embed itself into those wheels so yeah ultimately a little bit of pressure to hold it in place but not too much so we've understood the issue, we've taken a look at several solutions and also preventative measures. Now I should say at this point, if you're going to leave your machine for any length of time, weeks, months, or even in hot weather, you may start to find you get these flat spots come back in your wheels. It's just the nature of them against the uh, the rubber, against the metal. So hopefully you can get them out by, you know, adjusting those wheels, taking some of the play out, that type of thing. But ultimately, I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please remember to like and subscribe subscribe it always helps the channel and just as a reminder if you do need to buy new wheels i'll be putting some links in the description area below for the different models it always helps to have a spare set around anyway just in case one breaks and you need an emergency or like a bearing goes something like that now that is everything for this episode thank you very much for watching and as always a final thanks goes to my patrons thank you for keep supporting me if you want to get involved with my patron scheme check out the link at the bottom of the description area i will see you all on the next episode